Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6041. Item Number SCP-6041 Object Class Safe Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-6041 is to be contained within an anomalous vehicle containment bay in Site-43 when not in use. Person and entering SCP-6041-1 are to refrain from interacting with the environment whenever possible unless partaking in testing. Testing with SCP-6041 has been suspended until further notice. Current objectives are to prevent and mitigate the growth of SCP-6041-A. Description SCP-6041 is an object resembling an industrial scissor lift. At a distance, SCP-6041 appears to be made of standard materials compared to non-anomalous models. However, if a sentient being moves in close proximity while maintaining eye contact with SCP-6041, the object is perceived to be made of various types of anomalously durable paper, primarily cardboard, newspaper, and multicolored confetti. SCP-6041's main anomalous property becomes active when it is operated. SCP-6041 does not require electricity or gasoline to function, and extended beyond 12 meters. Additional scissor arms will emerge from the chassis, allowing SCP-6041 to ascend further. There is currently no known limit to this extension. All manifested scissor arms will sink and demanifest into the chassis upon descent. If one or more sentient beings are inside the confines of the platform as SCP-6041 ascends beyond 12 meters, subjects will report that their surroundings have drastically changed. These changes can be witnessed in person, and by photography slash videography. Examples of changes include Buildings and bridges are replaced by cardboard replicas and popsicle sticks respectively. All buildings have windows and doors drawn onto them in crayon. All metallic objects are wrapped in thick sheets of tinfoil. All bodies of water that appear are represented by pieces of blue paper, with the ocean appearing as multiple blue wool blankets overlapping each other. All earthly terrain appear to be composed of modeling clay, with the color of the clay matching the composition of the area. All humans, animals, anomalous entities, vehicles, and inanimate objects are depicted as plastic models constructed from ceramic material. These models are the exact size of their real-life counterparts. All models with the exception of inanimate objects are affixed to stands. The positions and posture of these models change constantly when not directly observed. All airborne entities and objects are suspended by thin strands of string. The length of the string is undetermined as it appears to extend indefinitely towards the sky. These changes are reversed upon complete descent. If a subject descends without operating SCP-6041, jumping off the platform, climbing down the scissor arms, crossing over to another high-rise object etc., the changes will remain and outside observers will witness subjects spontaneously disappearing. Subjects are capable of traversing this environment by foot while maintaining their endurance indefinitely. Subjects can only exit this environment by re-entering the platform and ascending with SCP-6041. Discovery SCP-6041 was recovered from San Juan Capistrano. California in the aftermath of a minor car collision which resulted in the damage of five separate vehicles. The owner of the car who caused the collision was in the middle of explaining why he was not to blame to another individual involved in the crash before strong winds removed the top of the car hauler attached to his vehicle, revealing SCP-6041. After SCP-6041's perception shifting properties became apparent to nearby civilians, the driver fled the area. Notes recovered from the vehicle claimed that the owner, Michael Ferry, 
designated Poi 4857, was an avid fan of Goy 0267. Are we cool yet? Poi 4857 stated that he found SCP-6041 by accident within the premises of an abandoned paper mill and had been attempting to bring the anomalous object back to his residence in hopes of integrating himself further into the anarchist community. All witnesses were amnesticized and SCP-6041 was transported to Site-43 without incident. A search priority was issued for Poi 4857 but no further sightings have been reported since. SCP-6041-Test-Log-JM-400 was found on Site-43 on March 1, 2014. Testing, shortly after containment, it became apparent that the visual changes experienced by subjects were in actuality SCP-6041 crossing over to a dimension parallel to our own. It was also revealed that any physical interaction in this dimension, hereby referred to as SCP-6041-1, will directly correspond to our own. SCP-6041-1 can be affected through physical interaction in our own dimension as well, albeit to a limited degree. A series of tests were commenced under lead researcher Jennings to test the limits of SCP-6041-1. Materials required one water hose, one wooden pole, 1.5 meters, JM-498, JM-390. Janitorial and maintenance staff. Test parameters. The hose will be used to create a large puddle on the ground. JM-498 and JM-390 are to operate SCP-6041 and enter SCP-6041-1. JM-498 is tasked with walking across the puddle. JM-390 is tasked with crawling under the puddle with use of the pole. Result, JM-498 walks across and immediately sinks into the puddle. JM-498 flounders around for 17 seconds before swimming to the other side, physically exhausted. JM-390 reluctantly approaches the puddle. JM-390 uses the pole to lift up a small section of the puddle to his surprise. JM-390 adjusts the pole upright and crawls underneath the puddle without difficulty. JM-390 comments that the experience was enjoyable to the annoyance of JM-498. Notes. All bodies in water in SCP-6041-1 universally possess a greater depth than our dimension's counterparts. Observers outside of SCP-6041-1 noticed a section of the puddle hovering above the ground, following an unidentified mass traveling under the water before dissipating. Materials required. SCP-6041, JM-498, JM-390. One hedge trimmer, one bowling ball. Test parameters. Testing is to commence far away from major population centers. JM-498 and JM-390 are to be provided with a hedge trimmer and a bowling ball. They are to operate SCP-6041, enter SCP-6041-1 and ascend high into the troposphere. Subjects are not hindered by oxygen deprivation whist in SCP-6041-1. They are to approach one of the clouds and sever the string, after which they are to tie the end of the string to the bowling ball. Result, SCP-6041 is positioned under a small cloud. JM-498 and JM-390 ascend and enter SCP-6041-1 as instructed. JM-498 initially approaches the string with the hedge trimmers, but suddenly presses them into JM-390's hand, citing that he has a better reach than him. It should be noted that JM-498 was clinically diagnosed with acrophobia before being recruited as janitorial and maintenance technician. JM-390 sighs and approaches the cloud, and cuts the string without difficulty. The cloud slowly floats to the ground. JM-390 grabs the string and ties it around the bowling ball.
Once confident it won't slip from the string, both personnel descend and exit SCP-6041-1. Notes. The cloud recovered was found to be tangible to solid matter, and displays properties consistent with cotton. The bowling ball was found to be suspended in midair. Once removed from the string, the bowling ball's anomalous properties ceased. Attempts to reattach the cloud to the string failed. The cloud was designated an anomalous object and placed in storage. Materials required, JM-498, JM-390, one shovel, one steel block, one knife, various types of colored clay. Test parameters. The steel cube is to be placed near SCP-6041, JM-498 and JM-390 are to operate SCP-6041 and enter SCP-6041-1. JM-498 and JM-390 are provided the shovel and clay, and the knife respectively. JM-498 is tasked with digging out a section of the floor and replacing it with the clay. JM-390 is tasked with removing the tinfoil from the cube. Result, JM-498 and JM-390 operated SCP-6041 and entered SCP-6041-1. JM-390 removed the tinfoil with the knife, revealing a smaller cube constructed of cardboard underneath. JM-498 dug several holes and filled them with clay-colored yellow, white, and green. Upon exiting SCP-6041-1, it was found that the metal shavings in the cube had transmuted into tinfoil and cardboard respectively. The holes that were dug up had been filled with sand, snow, and grass. Notes SCP-6041-1 has the potential to transmute matter in our dimension if certain measures are taken. Materials required JM-498 JM-390, one instance of Sus Domesticus. Domestic pig. Test parameters. The pig is to be released near SCP-6041, with leftovers from the cafeteria used to keep it stationary. JM-498 and JM-390 are to operate SCP-6041 and enter SCP-6041-1. They are then tasked to move the pig around various spots near SCP-6041. Result, JM-498 and JM-390 approached and moved the model. Outside observation showed the pig levitating off the ground and moving in the same direction as JM-498 and JM-390. Midway through the test, JM-498 accidentally lost his grip on the model allowing it to shatter on the ground. The pig suddenly stopped in midair before impacting the ground, shattering in the same manner. Despite its injuries, the pig neither expired nor bled out. The pig was returned to normal after arranging the broken pieces back in place and gluing them together. Notes the models are more fragile compared to non-anomalous counterparts. Extra precautions are now to be used when interacting with objects in SCP-6041-1. Materials required SCP-6041, JM-498, JM-390 Test parameters JM-498 and JM-390 are to operate SCP-6041 and enter SCP-6041-1. They are to ascend as high as possible to test the spatial regions of SCP-6041-1. Result. See Addendum 02. Addendum 02, Incident 6041-1. Following extensive testing. SCP-6041 received the attention of Site-43's arms and equipment section due to the nature of its anomalous properties. It was suggested that SCP-6041 could be used not only for reconnaissance, but also as a tool for combating dangerous anomalies without undue risk. As a result, SCP-6041 was considered for reclassification to Thormule class.
Before further discussions on the subject of SCP-6041 could be scheduled, Section Chair Dr. T. Bremel authorized a final test. The purpose of this test was to confirm if there was an equivalent to outer space within SCP-6041-1 in hopes of opening the possibility of assisting space-related endeavors. JM-498 and JM-390 were tasked with following the strings of SCP-6041-1 via SCP-6041 and reporting what they saw. SCP-6041-Incident JM-498 Incident 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 JM-498 
a massive hole is situated where SCP-6041 has emerged. JM-498 crouches and inspects one of the shards, a piece of glass painted dark purple on one side. JM-390 silently curses to himself. Oh. Yeah. That's going to be a problem, isn't it? End log. Unfortunately, the equivalent of the sky in SCP-6041-1 became damaged in the process, causing our own to become affected. A section of the thermosphere and exosphere spontaneously disappeared, leaving a massive hole in the atmosphere 20 kilometers above ground, hereby designated SCP-6041-A. Several anomalous objects were found near the bottom of SCP-6041 resembling thin gas-like shards that visually resemble the sky when observed from below. These shards were intangible in our dimension but not in SCP-6041-1, as such, it was possible to collect them. While outer space can be seen within SCP-6041-A, no air suction has been present around the anomaly and caused no detrimental effects to the surrounding atmosphere. Since SCP-6041-A was visible from the ground, containment procedures have been updated to conceal the anomaly through the use of an AHP, anti-memetic holographic projector, a large experimental device capable of imbuing a target with anti-memetic properties through the use of non-ionizing radiation and thaumaturgy, attached to a foundation satellite. All future tests and proposals involving SCP-6041 were postponed until the issue of SCP-6041-A has been resolved. Addendum 03, Escalation, 12 days after the manifestation of SCP-6041-A, it was found that the anomaly was slowly growing in size. This corresponded with the hole inside SCP-6041-1. The hole was cracking further and pieces of the ceiling were breaking off. Of greater concern was the fact that even though the damage to SCP-6041-A would not result in the destruction of the atmosphere, it could cause a BK-class broken masquerade scenario if not rectified. Emergency protocols were activated and significant resources were dedicated to containment, and if possible, complete termination of SCP-6041-A. In addition to being a spatial and dimensional anomaly, Further analysis proved SCP-6041 was also a non-tokinetic anomaly as it was found to emit low levels of humes. Lead researcher Jennings submitted a proposal. A flying drone with an attached Scranton reality anchor would approach the anomaly, with two others capable of directed thaumaturgical intervention, following to assist. It was theorized that if SRAs were to be deployed near SCP-6041-A, it would dissipate or at least be negated. Contrary to expectations, the growth rate of SCP-6041-A increased exponentially. Lead researcher Jennings was demoted and the new position was taken by Dr. Barnes. SCP-6041-A eventually reached a radius of 150 meters and the AHP had extreme difficulty covering the anomaly. Reports emerged of the appearance of more shards in nearby towns. MTF Row 43, Home Invaders, was deployed to retrieve the shards, and to amnesticize all witnesses. While the shards were recovered, MTF Row 43 failed to fully prevent the information from leaking across civilian populations. This necessitated the production of Chicken Little 2, The World's Gone Nuts, the live-action sequel to the, the 2005 film Chicken Little. The narrative details the sky actually falling due to the actions of a hostile alien empire. Chicken Little, played by actor Andrew Lincoln, is tasked to not only repair the sky, but to save the galaxy from plunging into civil war with the help of his friends. By the Foundation Front Company Secret Cut Productions as a cover story, after purchasing the rights from the Walt Disney Company. Lead researcher Barnes drafted another proposal involving retrieving the shards and reattaching them to the hole in SCP-6041-1. A large amount of shards were recovered. The damage to the ceiling was reversed when the edges of the hole and shards were pressed against each other, allowing the fissure to disappear. 
This reduced SCP-6041-A's size to 105 meters, but did not stop its rate of growth. If allowed to continue, it would soon return to its former size. The area was intensively searched for the remaining shards, but none were located. With the prospect of the resource drain of SCP-6041-A being unacceptable, lead researcher Barnes sought a more viable solution. Since the remaining shards were missing, he drafted a final proposal which involved creating a substitute for the empty spaces in the hole. A massive sheet of paper measuring 120 meters in perimeter was constructed and painted mostly cyan with large blotches of white on it. Personnel were able to prop the sheet up into SCP-6041-1 with great difficulty and were able to cover the hole with it through the use of 19 rolls of duct tape. The threat posed by SCP-6041-A was neutralized and expansion ceased. However, SCP-6041-A was replaced by the sheet and demonstrates the same anomalous properties as the shards. Because of this the AHP had to remain active. Chicken Little 2, The World's Gone Nuts, performed extremely badly at the box office, critics scrutinized the film on the grounds of poor use of CGI, the plot being nonsensical, and having its rating changed to a compared to the previous installment. Furthermore the furry community also viciously condemned the movie for replacing the anthropomorphic animal characters with humans for no apparent reason. The director in charge of the production was fired and secret cut productions went bankrupt. Although containment required extensive resources, lead researcher Barnes was pleased with the results citing that he and his team were able to neutralize SCP-6041-A in its prior form. He took credit for being the one to prevent the BK-class scenario from occurring. Addendum 04 Broken Masquerade Scenario On the day lead researcher Barnes scheduled for a celebration of his staff's successful neutralization of SCP-6041-A, the North Korea incident occurred, leading to an immediate BK-class scenario and the lifting of the veil. Lead researcher Barnes cancelled the celebration. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.